Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, and Anchor Podcasts. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. Amen. God bless you, precious saints of God. It's so good to be with you on this morning. I honor your precious bishop and pastor and certain to First Lady, Sister Victoria Nance, Mother Nance, and certainly to Mother Edith Smith. God bless you, Elder Nance. Enjoyed that song. It has to be one of my favorite songs. I'm in a thankful mood. Amen. Every day we should be in a thankful mode. Two, Diggin uh, McLean, God bless you. So good to see you again. And as I go through the, 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 the window here to Brother Marcus, it's good to see you again. Uh, Sister Dominic, amen. God bless you. I see a couple people at the bottom of my screen. I do not know, but I honor you. Amen. I lift you up. Amen. Then I was <clears throat> glad to hear Amen. Pastor Miller this morning. Amen. I did not know she was going to steal a few minutes to be with us on this morning. Certainly, uh, on our missionary Phyllis Shipley, did not know she was going to be here. And to Sister Jackie Bridges, God bless you. Amen. I trust you have let the pastor know <laughs> where you are this morning. Amen. Certainly, I uh, send greetings from Mother uh, grant on this morning. She sends her love. She is again fulfilling her duties at New Beginning this morning, but I'm glad to be here with you. I want to thank Bishop for this opportunity. God, amen, dropped, amen, a message in my heart. I really a lesson. I'm not going to preach. just going to teach a lesson this morning. He dropped this lesson in my heart. Amen. I knew, I knew I had to share with the uh, Faith Temple family. But as I begin to study and meditate, I come to understand that the lesson is for the entire body of Christ, the nation of NAFCOG at large. So as I travel, uh, possibly and hopefully in the new year coming in, the saints may hear this again. But when you hear the word of God over and over again, it's good. I don't think we just play one song and hear it one time, but we are supposed to rehearse the word of God in our spirit and in our mind over and over again. So again, I thank you. Thank you, Bishop, for this opportunity uh, for this space this morning. Thank you for the extended time. Amen. Thank you. I need, I think I need that this morning. Amen. Thank you so much. I have never, I've never 
open my Bible and just thumb through the Bible looking for something to say to the people of God. I wasn't taught that way. My former bishop and pastor uh, told me to, amen, lay before God and see what God wants to say to his people. I've always done that. When it comes to a lesson, when it comes to a message, I always ask God, what does he desire for me to speak to his people? I also want to thank Elder Lance. I sent him some slides earlier this morning, and thank you for your help on this morning as well, Elder Lance. What would I do without you on this morning? So with that being said, I want you to, uh, Elder Lance, would you put the first slide up and I'll uh, read our golden text this morning so we can understand where the Lord is taking us to on this morning. Yes, you have your Bibles this before us on this morning. God dropped uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. I have referenced this. Um, I've referenced this scripture in several times, but I never uh, use this as the primary scripture for that the Lord wanted to speak to his people. Allow me to read. Jeremiah says, O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. Since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. God bless the reading of his word, and with that, the Lord dropped this uh, lesson title in my spirit, fire in the belly, fire in the belly. When we speak of belly, we speak of the innermost part of one's being. I remember uh, precious mother Caroline Barrett in Franklin, Virginia. She has since passed on and she described it, that part of your being where you live. It is where you live, your thought process, that which you are very familiar with. It is you, fire in the belly. Uh, Elder, I need that scripture back up again. There's a couple of things I want to make plain there. Thank you so very much. Listen to what Jeremiah says. He's talking to God and he says, thou hast deceived me. Amen. Thou hast deceived me. In other words, Jeremiah did not get the results that he thought he would get. I want you to understand this, and, uh, and you got to really wrap your mind around this. Jeremiah preached for 40 years and did not get one convert. I'll say that again. Jeremiah preached and he declared the word of God for 40 years and did not have one convert. So he cries, Lord, you deceived me. This is not what I had expected. Saints of God, have you ever called yourself doing something from the Lord and you did not receive the results that you thought you should get? That was Jeremiah. And he understood, he said, you're stronger than I am. You have prevailed over me. Listen to what Jeremiah's daily situation was. I am in derision. In other words, he says, I'm being mocked. I'm being ridiculed. I'm being blamed. I'm being scolded. I am made a gazing stock and people do not like me for what I am saying to them. Sounds like God has put him out there and let the chips fall where they may. He had no good news for uh, the people of God. I want you to understand, we need a little backstory here. Jeremiah uh, was called by God, and we'll get to that 
in a couple of minutes. He was called. But Judah is the evil time in Judah's history. The nation of Israel has already gone into Assyrian captivity. They have been there for a period of over uh, almost 100 years. And Jeremiah begins to speak to God's people, calling them to their sin, if you will. It would seem like uh, uh, Judah would have learned a lesson from Israel. We understand Israel is the amen, northern kingdom, and Judah is the southern kingdom. Listen how God characterized these two nations, if you will, God's people, if you will. He called Israel backsliding Israel. Then he called Judah your treacherous sister. I'll say that again because when I when we read that and when I read that, it struck something in my heart. When you call God's people, God called his people backsliding Israel and her treacherous sister, Judah. Judah had fallen into Baal worship. They are burning uh, incense to Baal. They're causing their children to pass through the fire. They're causing their children to burn in the fire, if you will. They're doing all of everything rather abominating that God detests, does not like. Nothing is going right according to the true word of God. And here's the kicker, saints of God. They think, they think they're right. We're God's people. God is blessing us. But God now, amen, is ready to pour out judgment on Judah just as he had on Israel. Again, Jeremiah cries out spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach and a derision, a derision. Again, he's being blamed. He's being mocked. He's being ridiculed. He doesn't get the result that he thinks he's going to get. But now we move to the ninth verse. He said, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. He made up his mind. I'm not going to open up my mouth. I'm going to sit still. I'm going to go within myself. This is not what I have designed for my life. How many of us have been in that same position? We did not get the desired results that we had expected. When God's blessing, when God's doing good things in our life, we already tell of his goodness. But this is not the case for Jeremiah. But now he says, we get to the thought of the lesson today. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire. People of God, fire, it burns, as Jeremiah said. It constrains. Fire compels. Fire pushes. Fire is relentless. It does not let you do what you want to do, but rather we do, you do what God desires for us to do. Again, I'm going to repeat that because if you missed that, you missed the whole point of the lesson. Fire pushes, fire constrains, fire compels. It pushes, it motivates us. It allows us to do that which we do not want to do. This is what Jeremiah says. And I was weary with forbearing. In other words, I got tired of kicking against the pricks, if you will. If you remember Brother Paul, amen, he said, it's hard to kick against the prick. In other words, it's hard not to do that which God desires for us to do. In concluding that ninth verse, Jeremiah says, I could not, I could not stay. I could not stay. Ellen Lance, I want you to put up the, the, the Jeremiah, the first chapter, if you will, those for first uh, three through five verses. Thank you so we much. Move on. This we is move on. This call. is the prophet's call. This is the prophet's call. You have to know what God have done for you. If you don't know what God have done for you, you are going to be amen here, there, and everywhere. This is what he says. 
It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, that's uh, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. In other words, Jeremiah prophesied when Je uh, Josiah was king, Jehoiakim was king, and Zedekiah was king. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I form thee in the belly, God says, I knew you. What an omniscient God that we serve, an all-knowing God. Understand what Jeremiah is saying is, God knew him. God knew us before we were formed in the belly. That's God. Nobody but God. He says, I knew thee. And he says now, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, listen to what he says, I sanctified thee. Now we got to understand this word uh, sanctification that God uses here. This is saying, Jeremiah, I have set you apart to do what I have ordained you to do. You will not do the profane before I form you in the uh, belly, before you came out of the womb, I set you apart to do what I call you to do. No wonder he could not, amen, uh, not do, not do what God called him to do. He says, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, fire in the belly. Jeremiah found out that God's word was so strong, his word was so forceful that he could not do what he wanted to do. No wonder God had his hand on him before, <laughs> before he came out of his mother's belly. It is a good thing, parents that have had children, ask God to place his blessing upon your your children, because if you don't do that, I heard this more so when I was growing up than what I hear now. Mothers gave their children back to God. I sat at the dining room table and my mother told me so explicitly, she says, Ivan, I gave you back to God when you were born. And that really touched me because she had something in her spirit that God wanted my life to be different than uh, uh, I had ordained for my life. And I'll share a story with you further, uh, maybe further down in the lesson. But God already set Jeremiah apart to do what he was doing. The next slide, uh, Elder, if you would. This is what Jeremiah said. Then said I, ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak. We always put up a complaint to God why we can't do what we are called to do. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the experience. I don't know what this one knows. I'm, we always try to compare ourselves to somebody else. Jeremiah was uh, no different than we are. He says, ah, Lord God, behold. He says, I cannot speak. For I am a child. Look what God says back to him. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I'm a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. He says, be not afraid of the faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. i always thankful how God prepares you before he sends you to do something, not only ministers, not only uh, preachers, if you will, but thanks of God. If we have a listening ear to what God is doing in our lives, you will know beyond a shadow of whatever God has called you to do, just to live holy, just to live holy. He says, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's not just for uh, the disciples, soon to be apostles in the New Testament, if you will. 
that is to the church at large. God says to his people today, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I I, it matters not what your circumstances are. And thanks of God, I'll be the first to admit, sometimes our circumstances feel as though they are so overwhelming that we cannot bear them. But God will give you strength. He will give you peace. Whenever we feel like those situations are beyond what we are able to bear, God tells Jeremiah, again, be not afraid of the faces. For I'm with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Elder, the next slide. Now, this next slide is maybe a little lengthy, but you must understand the, 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 the severity. God's people, Judah is a stiff necked people. They're hard headed. They don't want to hear truth. And they are comfortable in what they are doing. They're comfortable in sinning, if you will. Keep in mind, that was not the Judah that was called out to be a nation under God. They had slipped from where God had uh, brought them from. This is the language. Then the Lord put forth his hand, touch my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. This is an anointing. Saints of God, you may not know it, but the, the graces of salvation we have, you have been anointed to live holy. He said, behold, I have put uh, my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down. <laughs> to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. What an awesome task that God laid upon uh, Jeremiah. I'll read that again because that's so significant. It tells us in a nutshell all that he will face. He said, I've set the older nations and over the kingdoms, root out, pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. God's anger is at its peak. He's ready to pour out judgment on Judah. Listen to the 11th verse. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Something we must understand here. An almond tree is the first tree that blooms in the spring. And what God is saying now I am hastening to perform my word. God's tired. The cup is full. He's ready to pour out judgment upon uh, Judah. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot. In other words, I see a pot that is boiling. It's ready to overflow. It's boiling. And the face thereof is toward the north. Yes, and this simply means that God is going to send a nation out of the north to correct, to chastise, to bring, is, uh, rather bring Judah down so they will eventually, and I say eventually because they got to go in bondage and some will die, they got to eventually go into Babylonian captivity. Again, keep in mind, this is almost 100 years after uh, Israel has been captive to Assyria. God used Assyria as a chastening rod. Now God reaches out and is going to use uh, 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 Babylon, the king of Babylonian or Babylon, as a chastening rod for Judah. You must understand, Jeremiah declared, he cried out, it's time for you to go into Babylonian captivity. You cannot resist it. All that resists uh, this captivity, you shall die. If you give up, if you submit to the king of Babylon, you shall live. Yes, you got to go to Babylon, but you will not die if you go willingly. If you uh, reject, if you deny what's happening, if you don't listen to Jeremiah, 
you will die by the sword. Not only you will die by the sword, but your families will die by the sword. Listen again, I'm reading again, and I will, yes, let me, the, the 15th verse. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls there round about and against all the cities of Judah. In other words, there's no escape. The city is completely surrounded. Keep in mind, this is the will of God for his people. You have wrought evil in my sight. Now it's time for you to be chastened. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness and who have forsaken me and have burned incense uh, unto other gods and worshiped the works of their own hand. They made idols, graven images, and they were fallen down saying that this is our God. It's a lie. It's hatched out from the devil. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them. Talk to Jeremiah and all that I command thee, be not dismayed of their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I made thee this day. Listen to what he did for Jeremiah, a defense city and an iron pillar. In other words, Jeremiah, you're going to be stronger than they are. They will resist you, but they are not going to rule over you. They're not going to fight against you. They did, but they did not prevail. Brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee. Jeremiah had foreknowledge, but they shall not prevail against thee for I am with thee. Oh, that should have been comfort to Jeremiah. Don't forget my subject, fire in the belly, fire in the belly. I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. We see Israel's plight. Keep in mind, saints of God, God's word is being hastened. I'm ready to do this. Time is out leniency is out. Forgiveness is out. I'm ready to do what I have made up in my mind, the counsel of God's will. God only moves by the counsel of his own will. I'm ready to do that, which I propose to do. But he tells Jeremiah again, I am with you. Elder Lance, would you go back to um, Jeremiah chapter 20 again? Put that slide up for me. Yes, yes. Something else I want to make mention before we move on. Again, I want you to call this to your mind. He says again, I'm not going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to sit here, not going to do what you tell me to do. Even though, even though God have told him to, God have already uh, fortified him, God already solidified him. Jeremiah says, I'm not going to do what you tell me to do. I'm good right where I am. But again, God's word was so powerful. It just burned in my spirit. Thank of God, have you ever heard a message and you kept hearing that message over and over again? You did not want to do what the message said do, but it was so powerful. It was so strong. I had to submit to what God was telling me. That is the fire that is in the belly. I remember, amen, the night the Lord justified me, my pastor, and I shared this with you, just gonna share the message. He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say. That message tore me up. It burned in my spirit so much so I could not, do that which I wanted to do. I did not want to get up off my seat and ask the saints to pray for me, but the message, it was indeed like fire burning in my spirit. So was, so was, so was this word that Jeremiah uh, 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 received 
from the Lord. This is a good time for me to interject this also. I said I had a personal story. There was a time, and you may have heard me say this, but it's just it's so fitting for the point we're at in the lesson. There was a time in my salvation, keep in mind, saints, I was baptized and I was filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, but I got tired of church work. I got tired of people telling me to do this and do that. I was a, I was a bishop's son, and when you're the bishop's son, y'all may not understand this, maybe you will, they expect more out of you than what they do themselves, and I got tired of it. I was done. And anybody know my personality? When I'm done, I am done. Mother Grant wouldn't tell you that. So I went to my pastor as I'm moving out of Baltimore. I had a job that, amen, they had outlets all up and down the East Coast. And I told my supervisor, the first one that opened up, I'm done. Happened to have been in New Jersey. I told my pastor I was uh, uh, moving to New Jersey. I wasn't going to backslide. I was going to live holy, but I was tired of all of that drama. Y'all know church drama that was going on. And I packed up my house, put my things in storage. My father-in-law had one of those houses. He had a, two apartments, second and third floor. We moved temporarily there on the third floor. And as soon as I got word that that that, that was open, I was gone. I did get that word. but something happened between the time I told my pastor and the time that my uh, transfer came through, ah, uh, there was something burning on the inside that I could not do what I wanted to do. Saints of God, keep in mind what I told you. It burns, it pushes, mm. it motivates, it compels. I could no more leave out of Baltimore because of that fire of God's word that was burning in my spirit. I even wanted to go. Spirit of God was telling me not to go. Guess what I did? That fire was so prevalent. It was there in the morning. It was there at night. It just stayed with me. It, it, it bothered my mind. As Jeremiah says, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. I'm talking about fire in the belly. If you missed the point, I'm talking about fire in the belly that will not allow you to do what you want to do, but rather only do that which God desires for you to do. Keep in mind, saints of God, you don't belong to yourself. We're bought with a price. We belong to God. Paul said, you you're bought with a price. You don't belong to yourself again. We belong to God. We are no more ourselves. We belong. We are God's property, if you will. You may not understand that, but you need to understand it. When you cry holy, when you say the Lord sanctified you, when you say the Lord is baptized and fill you, you are not your own. God leads, he guides, he directs. He does what he desires to do in our lives. Again, I'm, 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 I'm belaboring the point, but it's true. I wanted to go, but God told me to stay, and I stayed, and I would have missed. That's what you don't understand. You'll miss. I would have missed the blessing of God because why? I would have been outside of the will of God, and it's a dangerous place, saints of God, Hear me what I say. It is a dangerous place to be when we're living outside of the word of God. Jeremiah did not want to do what he was called to do, but he knew he could not do because God's word was a fire in his bones. But our lesson this morning, fire in the belly. I want, uh, Elder Lance, I want you to go to the New Testament slide, if you will, in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy. Yes, Second Timothy. I'm jumping ahead. Uh, there we go. There we go. Second Timothy. Paul writes this letter to Timothy, who is his protege. He's about ready to take over the church and 
Brother Paul gives him some sound doctrine. He writes this portion of the scripture because, amen, there were two brethren in the church that had raised up and they were preaching false doctrine. Hymenaeus and Philetus, they were preaching that, or they were telling the other saints that the resurrection had already passed. And Brother Paul says very clearly that the resurrection, Christ was indeed the resurrection. We know that from the word of God. When Christ went to uh, uh, the house of Mary and Martha, and he was just about ready to uh, uh, resurrect, uh, 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 yes, Lazarus, and he asked Martha a question. He says, you think I'm able to do this? And, and Martha says, yeah, I know, I know, I know my brother will rise at the, at the end, but Jesus says very clearly, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth in me shall never die. In other words, Jesus said, the resurrection is already here. People of God, when we're in Christ, we live with Christ and we pass out the body with Christ. So whether we live or whether we die, that is the hope. Ah, God, thank you for the hope that's in Christ. Where we live or whether we die, we are with Christ. And these brethren, not only were they preaching false doctrine, profane Babylons, as Brother Paul characterized it, but they carried a number of the people out of the church that were believing with them. Let it be known, somebody will always believe false doctrine. If a third of the angels rose up in heaven against God and they were destroyed, you know it's going to happen here. And I tell uh, the pastors uh, a time before, don't be surprised if somebody raises up in the church and they declare something that is not biblically sound. So was it happening there. So Brother Paul writes this. I should have included, amen, uh, 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 the 19th verse, if you will. I think the 20th verse is there. Uh, and it says, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Look at that word, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And we go back to the Old Testament when Jesus said, well, rather God said, I knew thee before you came out of your mother's womb. God knows us now. I place this New Testament scripture to let you understand, saints of God, that the Old Testament is only a lens to the New Testament. In other words, Old Testament concealed New Testament revealed. Everything that God did in types and representations, all of that, it's clearly understood. It's clearly known. It's plain. Everybody can see it in the New Testament. And the word of God goes on to let, let us know. And Paul said, every man that nameth the name of Christ Amen. Let him depart from iniquity. And I'll move on to what's on our screen there. For man, therefore, purge himself from these. He shall be a vessel of honor. Notice this word, sanctified people of God, where we understood it to mean in the Old Testament, we were set apart. We were set apart. Uh, Jeremiah was set apart for God's use. This word, sanctified means the very soul is cleansed. This word means the cleansing of the soul. We understand the word in the Old Testament did not mean that because, stand the reason, no blood had been shed. Christ had not come on the scene. Christ hadn't died. Blood hadn't been shed on the cross. Christ had not been resurrected. Again, Jeremiah was uh, ordained, set apart, to do what God called him to do. But listen to what this says. If a man therefore purge himself from these, that, 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 that wood and that hay and that stubble that's recorded in the 20th verse, 
He shall be a vessel unto honor. Saints of God, we want to be vessels of honor. Sanctified, meet, suitable for the master's use and prepared to every good work. My daddy used to use this illustration. We're all just tools in the toolbox of God. He may not use you this day. Pastor may call on you next Sunday to do something, but understand. Be ready whenever the call comes because we've lived holy, because we have been cleansed from our old ways. We have, we're ready when God calls us. Anytime he calls on us. And we thank God for that. Again, again, this false doctrine had gone out in the church and it had taken some of the church members away. And again, Brother Paul says, the foundation of God, truth. Truth was in the Old Testament. Truth is in the New Testament. The foundation of God standeth sure. What is that seal? God knoweth them that are his. Every man, every man, the name of the name of Christ, we have to depart from all that is not a man on it in the sight of God. So Brother Paul says to a man, uh, Timothy, flee also youthful lust but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on uh, the Lord out of a pure heart. Fire in the belly, fire in the belly. And the only way we can have fire in the belly is to in fact do, amen, be obedient to that which God has called us to do, amen. We are the army of God positioned to do what God has called us to do. Saints of God, I trust you're getting something out of the lesson on this morning. And now I'm, I may go back to some of that, but we're going to move on for right now. The New Testament, amen. I want to get my uh, 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 slides for St. John chapter 20. Yeah, verses uh, St. John chapter 20. Trust I didn't skip ahead too far. Yes. St. John chapter 20, amen. I'm getting reading that, uh, see verse 19. Then the same evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, this is the promise of New Testament fire. I want you to pay close attention to this. The New Testament promise of fire. Then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Understand Jesus was just resurrected. The disciples, 10 of them now, they were afraid. They were downright scared. They all fled from Christ because they thought they were going to be killed as well. And they were all assembled, watch again what the scripture says, for the fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst. Notice this, Jesus has a resurrected body now. He is a spirit being. What the scriptures tell us, he just appeared in the room. There was no need for a door. There was no need for a window for Christ. Christ just appeared in the midst of his disciples because he had his spiritual body now. That old body was dead. He's in that spirit body that he came prior to him coming to earth, if you will. And when he had so said, he said this, peace be unto you. I want you to notice what Jesus said. Peace be unto you. People of God, when you're going through your trials and when you're going through your tribulations, I want you to sit still and hear the peace of God that he speaks to your heart. Say, how, 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 how do I hear that? Isaiah gave us a window to that. He says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. That's Isaiah 26 and 3, I believe. 
thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. Why? Because he trusteth. The only way you can receive peace is because you trust in the Lord. Sounds simple, but, but it's really not. There is no peace outside of trust in God. You can trust in this. You can trust in your bank account. You can't even trust in your job. I don't care if your bank account does say X number of dollars and you have supplied to the full. We must yet trust God. He put the disciples at ease. Let him, he, them know his peace grants assurance. Jesus said something like this. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. He says, in the world, you shall have tribulation. Saints of God, put this word, put that fire of the word in your belly today. In the world, you shall have tribulation. That's a foregone conclusion. You cannot run away from trials. You can't run away from tribulations. You can't run away from the hard things of life. You're going to have tribulation. But he says, in me, you are not of the world. Keep in mind, when God baptizes and fill you with the Holy Ghost, you are not of this world, but you belong to him. He says, peace, peace be unto you. My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world giveth. We're living in a day and a time, saying that that the world is relying on all types of fixes, all types of medication, this, that, and the other, trying to find some comfort. There is no comfort in the world. You can lay right down in the midst of trouble. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. This is why everything else is going on. Notice when, when David wrote that, he was going through. He was, his life wasn't as it wanted to be. He was going through, but it said, the Lord allows me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still well. He restoreth my soul. Ah, that's the kind of God that we serve. He gives peace. Ask God for that peace that you won't wake up frustrated and upset in the morning when bad news uh, come in the mail or a telephone call comes and it disturbs your peace. We cannot avoid those things that come at us from day to day. You may have gotten up and prayed and everything is all right, but know this, saints of God. Jesus says to you, peace be unto you. And when he had thus, uh, when he had, had so said, the Bible says he showed unto them his hands and his side, wanting them to know, I am that one that was crucified. I am, I am risen from the grave. I am the same one that was with you prior to my death. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Keep, they did not recognize him before. Not until he showed him his hands. Y'all know Doubting Thomas. We won't go down that road today. I won't read that. But he says, unless I see his hands, unless I see his feet, I will not believe. So the people sitting in the church right today, full of unbelief, saints of God, you will not receive the fullness of God and you will not receive the fire of God unless you believe God. Believing is not seeing. I taught a lesson years ago in Baltimore. Believe it is not sin. You believe when you don't see. <laughs> you can believe all day long when, 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 when you see the blessing. You, you, you know you're blessed and there's blessings all around. That's not, that's not having faith in God. Having faith is God when you don't have, when you can't see, when you don't know. That's when we must yet have that peace. I know I went far astray there. We're talking about fire in the belly. Peace gives you fire in the belly. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. He assures them a second time. He assures them a second time. Peace be unto you. As my father sent me, even so send I you. He's commissioning them. But I want you to notice the 22nd verse. Some good stuff in this 22nd verse. And when he had said this, when he had said this, he breathes on them. Mm. I looked at that word breathe and I asked God, I need 
understanding, I need revelation on this particular uh, verse here because it just wasn't natural breath. Two things happen here when Christ breathed on his disciples. Number one, Christ prepared them to receive the Holy Ghost. He says right there, receive your Holy Ghost. They could not have received the Holy Ghost unless he breathed on them. God revealed to me, this is when Christ sanctified them. The breath of the, uh, thank you, Jesus, the breath of the Holy Ghost sanctified them. And I got caught up in the spirit there because God gave my father-in-law a gift and I saw this gift in action. Some may not believe, but I, I, I witnessed this. I witnessed this. He gave him a gift to breathe on the saints as he was led by the power of the Holy Ghost. He would breathe on the saints and they would be healed. There was a, a sister saint in the church. Hope I remember the gender correctly, but one leg was shorter than the other. Some may think I'm talking just for talking, but witness. He breathed on that infirmity, if you will. And the other leg became as long as the leg that was as it should have been. Again, the breath of the Holy Ghost is powerful. The breath of the Holy Ghost, I'm repeating myself, it is powerful. It is miraculous. He breathed on his disciples and he said, receive you the Holy Ghost. He sanctified them so that they could receive it. He prepared them. Saints of God, you must be prepared to receive the Holy Ghost. You just don't receive the Holy Ghost just like that. You must be prepared to receive the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Then, uh, 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 I don't want to let this thought drop. He gave them a inkling of the power of the presence of the Holy Ghost when it was recorded in Acts, the second chapter, if you will. How do I know that? Because the Holy Ghost came as a sound of a Russian mighty wind. I shall continue uh, in Acts 1 and 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded they should not depart. They should not depart. Some very important stuff, but we'll get to uh, 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 that in a minute. That is how to receive the fire or those of us, how to retain the fire. You just don't receive the fire. It has to be kept. I know the power of God keeps us, but there must be actions on our part to allow the presence of God to be with us. And being assembled together with them, what did he do? He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. He gave them some instructions. Saints of God, when your pastor stands before you and he shares a message shares a lesson with you. I want you to have a second ear to hear God's instructions that are going out through the word of God. I submit to you, saints, if you miss the instructions that are given, you fall that much behind because you cannot act on the instructions that were given. God always gives his people instructions. Did not he do that to uh, Jeremiah? So he does it to his disciples here. Being assembled together with them, commanded them, he's telling them again, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, ye have heard of him. Watch this now, for John truly baptized with water. And ye 
shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Notice I, I, I captured this, the New Testament promise of fire. I did that because, amen, for the simple reason, that was enclosed, it's encased in the scripture with revelation and understanding. God prepared them to receive what he had already promised. If God makes your promise, saints of God, understand this, there are always preparations on our part to receive that which the Lord has promised to give us. We'll get to that momentarily here. I'm moving on, I'm moving on, I'm moving on. Keep in mind what I said that the, 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 the Old Testament is a lens to the New Testament. The people of God, this always fascinated me, people of God, when I read the Old Testament, they did not have what we have. And maybe that's the reason why they, 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 they faltered, but there were some people of God that held on by their obedience to the law. That's all they had. What the law told them to do, that is what they did. And because they did what the law told them to do, they were blessed, if you will. We move to St. Luke. The 24th chapter, Jesus is getting ready to go off the scene here. And I caption this as how to receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. There's some things in here that we must do to receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's a package deal. You don't want to go to your favorite outlet and they says this is enclosed in uh, your package. You don't want to see anything left out. We want everything that the store promised me or the, that I have put on my list. I want you to understand we cannot fall short of anything that's in the package of salvation. This is what he says here. This is uh, uh, how to. I am, I know this very well. I not only tell you what to do, but God has made me in how to preacher. You can go on YouTube today and you can find out how to fix anything. Don't believe me? Check out YouTube. You may have already tried it. Years ago, we used to have manuals. It's so easy. Mother Grant has this saying, and it's true. If we hit a problem, we don't know how to do it. She says, somebody has had the problem before us. Let's go on YouTube to find out how to do it. How to receive the fire of the Holy Ghost, and I'm putting an addendum to that. How to retain the fire of the Holy Ghost. Listen to what the Word of God says. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Here we go again. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with fire. And let me back up. Endued with power from on high. He just gave some instructions. Remember the instructions I just said a few minutes ago? He gave some, what is the instruction? I want you to be obedient <laughs> to what I told you to do. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. I want you to stay there until you be in due. I don't want you to get tired. I don't want you to say, well, it's not coming. I've done this and then nothing happened. I'll, I, I can't allow you to understand how many times I've heard the saints of God come to me. I prayed and I prayed and nothing's happened. That bothers my spirit. You know what I tell them? Go back. <laughs> Pray again. You didn't do it right. God's word is for all people. I've seen the saints in the church, sit out, sit in the church, right where all the fire, all the power is, and miss out on what God has for them. But then again, I've seen those that knew nothing about the word of God come in the house of God and get what God had for them, all because they didn't have any preconceived notions. They didn't get tired. They didn't get upset, but they allowed the word of God to work in them and they heeded the instructions that 
the pastor gave them. He says, behold, I send my prayer. He says, I'm sending it. I'm, if somebody tells you that they're sending you something, what do you do? You wait for it. That's what tarry means. You wait. He said, I'm sending it. I want you to wait in Jerusalem. Don't want you to get tired. Don't want you to get upset. Don't get, amen, discouraged. Mm. I taught a lesson one time in Baltimore. It was called the three Ds. The three Ds. You get disappointed. Disappointment brings discouragement. Mm -hmm. Discouragement brings depression. I'll say that again. And the saints of that night, I taught on Tuesday night, the saints looked at me like I was crazy. I said, disappointment brings discouragement. When you have your heart set on something, you can't miss. I'm blessed, it's in the bag. But when you don't get what you desire, you get disappointed. Disappointment brings discouragement. And this is the, the worst of all. Discouragement brings on depression. And you know, there's an entire campaign going on in the world now for people that are living from day to day depressed for whatever circumstances. But again, back to the point. The promises come, I want you to wait. And he led them as far as to Bethany. Watch this now. Important point here. Christ could go no further with them. He had done everything that he had done for them. He led them as far as he could go. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and was carried up to heaven. The promise is there. <laughs> his blessings upon them. It was up for them to be obedient. Obedience. We know the scripture. You know this. Obedience is better than sacrifice. What does that scripture mean? Obedience is better than sacrifice. In the Old Testament, saints of God, they had to bring their sacrifice, the, 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 the lamb to be slain, if you will. And that was this. If they did the sacrifice, it was good. How does that impact us upon in this day and time we live? God would rather for us to obey him than for us to do all those church trappings, if we will. We attend church, but don't obey him, no good. We attend church and don't pay our tithes, no good. Because that's a tithes is a sacrifice. Because we, again, he is telling us what to do so we can be blessed. Saints of God, you don't really have to ask God to, to bless you. You don't have to ask it. Just pay your tithes. I'm digressing. I pay your tithes. You're already blessed. It's not up to you. And it's necessary. It's what we do to see how the money is being, to being uh, 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 dispersed. And we know that the money is being dispersed because we have business meetings and we have documentation that you can come look. But we obey. We do what God tells us to do. Bring you all the tithes into the store out there. And maybe meet in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out of blessings that you shall not have room to receive. We can deduce from that scripture. If I pay my tithes, I am already blessed, no matter how he chooses to bless me. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried them up in heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Oh, there's a whole lot. Oh, not yet. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There's a whole lot in here that we need to understand. Something is going on here. We must, in order to get the fire of the Holy Ghost, we got to be obedient. We got to have joy. 
joy is not something that you <laughs> can do by yourself. Joy comes with knowing who Christ is. Joy was placed there when you cried holy. You're supposed to. Joy. They blessed them. Jesus blessed them. What did they do? They returned back praising and blessing God continually. The praise did not stop because they had a promise. I want you to stay here. I want you to uh, wait. When God, when Christ, when God blesses his people, joy, joy comes. This is joy that, amen, the world has no definition for. This joy, the, the joy that comes from the world is short-lived because of things and happenings. I'll say that again, that's noteworthy. Joy from the world comes from the fact they have things and things, stuff is happening in their lives. Events are happening in their lives that they are glad about. Oh, I'm happy today. Well, what happens when you don't have things, when you didn't get what you thought you'd get from the Lord? This joy that he gives, it is spiritual joy. It's joy unspeakable, as Peter said, full of glory, because the Lord have done something down in your spirit. We used to sing, I taught a song to the choir in Baltimore, I can't stop praising him, I can't stop. Why? Because the joy of the spirit is down on the inside, and it's not affected by how much money I have. It's not affected by the job that I have. It's not affected by trials and tribulation. It is separate from what I am going through in my life. I used to tell the people in Baltimore, on your worst day, that's the time you come to church and allow the spirit to take you up. Praising and blessing God. How long? Continually. Thanks of God, I, I will be so glad. I know you. Uh, we thank God for the medium of Zoom. Thank God. But when the time comes that the saints of God can gather, I'm waiting for that time. We can gather and we can lift our voices in praise and adoration. It should be spontaneous. Nobody should have to tell you to raise your hands and praise God. You know why they can't raise their hands and praise God? Because there's no joy. There's no praise and down on the inside. It's got to be on the inside. Fire must be in the belly before you can praise God. They were just joyful. Watch the fire hadn't fell. They were just joyful because he blessed them and they saw him leave and they had a promise that they hid in their spirit. So they went back to Jerusalem. They tarried there with joy, praising God and blessing God continually. Listen to what else they had. Unity. They were in unity and fervent prayer and supplication. Three things that we have to understand here. Unity. Of course, they were all together. They, 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 they had this mutual love and admiration for one another. But I want you to understand, saints of God, something else happens in this word of unity. We think of just from saint to saint. You have to be unified in your own self. That is so noteworthy. I'm going to say that again. You have to be unified in, within yourself. Your mind cannot be here. Your mind cannot be there. You cannot be thinking what's happening on the job, this, that, and all the other. You got to be one with yourself. Mm -hmm. James said this in the first chapter, reads around the eighth verse, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. One precious man of God told me something. That's my, I hold dear what my father-in-law taught me and I hold dear what my daddy taught me. These are the great men that had an impact upon my life. My father-in-law told me this when I first got saved. He said, son, your mind is the devil's playground. Hmm. I'll say that again, and it's true. Saints of God, if you allow the devil, your mind is indeed the devil's playground. 
You got to be in harmony with yourself, in unity with yourself. You can't doubt. There's no room for doubt in God. There's no room for unbelief in God. No room. If it is, you make room for the enemy. I will not make room for the enemy. What does the enemy do with your mind? He torments. He disturbs. Sad to say, some saints cannot lay down at night and have a, a peaceful sleep. God knows I'm not talking about anybody. I'm just talking about things that I have experienced as a pastor down through the years. Saints of God, you are supposed to lay down at night and let your rest be peaceful because, again, Scripture says thou will keep him in perfect uh, peace whose mind is stayed on him. If your mind is not stayed, I know we have family. I know we have responsibility. But at the forefront, you must keep your mind, amen, stayed on those things that God have, have shared and given you. Firm and unity, unity within yourself. Can't be a scatterbrain, given to do this one day and given to do that because you change according to the situation. Saints of God, we are the same. Fervent prayer. Hmm. The fervent prayer of a righteous man, James said, availeth much. What was James talking about? This prayer is so motivated, it's so hot. This prayer gets action. And that's what they were doing. They were united in prayer. This prayer gets results because we stay before the Lord. I was taught, my pastor taught the saints of God. We carry a prayerful spirit. I am always praying. I'm always lifting the saints of God before God. Now talking about the time that I, I fall on my knees. I'm, I carry, I carry a prayerful spirit because I have allowed God. You got to allow, I've allowed God to drop this one in my spirit and that one in my spirit and the other in my spirit. I am always in a prayerful spirit. That does not allow the enemy any room. Supplication. Supplication means you're very specific in your prayer. Father God of heaven, they told me I could receive fire. I want the fire of your spirit. I want the fire of your word in my belly, in my innermost part, that place within me where I live, that part of me that is truly me and only me. Got to be specific. Got to be specific. Specific. I told God what I wanted from him when I was seeking salvation. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm not going to rehearse what I've already told you. Acts 1 and 14. These all continued. Watch this again. With one accord, they were together again. In prayer and supplication with the women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother, all of them, the 120 people were gathered because Christ had promised them the power of the Holy Ghost. We don't have those services like we used to have. Let's move on. I want to go to Acts 2. You, you know this. You know this. Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, God only works in the fullness of his time. God only works. Write that down. Highlight it put it up in big bold letters, God works only in the fullness of his time. You wonder why uh, things have not happened? The fullness of time hasn't happened. We get discouraged because we were disappointed. God only works in the fullness of his time. When the fullness of time, you shall have what God says you shall have. They were all with one accord in one place. The writer, Luke, made it very clear to let us know they were beaten, they were all together in one place, they were all unified in their spirit. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, that same 
inkling of the sound, just, to, just, just, just the inkling that Christ, when Christ breathed on them, sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Here we go now, saints. This requires a little bit of discussion. Please bear with me, saints. I'm trying to finish here. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Saints of God, I want you to understand something about the Holy Ghost. The evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is indeed the speaking of other tongues. A tongue that you are not very well familiar with. That is the evidence, the speaking of tongues. But everybody in the church does not have the gift of tongues. It's the difference between the evidence of tongues and there's a difference between the gift of tongues. Sometimes when I speak in tongues, I know very well what God is saying, but then there's other times it's God's will that I should reveal that. But then there are times when God says, keep that for now, it shall be revealed later. These were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. <clears throat> that was the sign, the evidence. The old church, I'm talking about the old church, I'm talking about the church in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. And I know shoes are not like, no doubt you've heard the same thing. That's how they, they, they described it back then. They said, if you buy the shoe, the tongue comes with it. That was those old laced up shoes. Men and women warm the same. They were laced up shoes. All the shoes had a tongue. Just a lateral uh, bit of information for you to understand what I'm saying. If you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it does in fact come with the speaking of tongues. That does not mean that there's a gift of tongues. Mother Grant will very well let you know that when she received the baptism, she spoke in tongue, but she'll let you know she does not have the gift of tongue. And if you don't have the gift of tongue, don't you be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. God will do with you however he chooses to do, but not everybody that in church has been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire has a gift of tongue. Back to the third verse. And they appeared unto them. This is a fire, uh, cloven tongues like of the fire, and it sat upon each of them. They were baptized with the fire as well. What did I say at the beginning of this lesson? Fire motivates, fire constrains, fire compels, fire pushes you to do that which you do not want to do. Remember I told you I wanted to leave Baltimore? The fire of the spirit would not let me. You got to know, you got to know the voice of God when it's speaking to you. You got to know when the word of God, the word of God is like fire. I couldn't get around it. I was like Jeremiah, I couldn't stay. I couldn't follow through with the plans that I had made. I had to submit to the will of God to stay where he had placed me and to endure whatever I was doing. I would have missed out. I would have never gotten to Florida if I had a pushed ahead to New Jersey like it was in my spirit. It wasn't for the Holy Ghost to send me to New Jersey. You got to know what the spirit tells you to do. That's how you receive the Holy Ghost in fire. You got to be obedient. You got to have spiritual joy. You got to have joy down on the inside that makes you rejoice when you don't feel like rejoicing when someone uh, tells you to, 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 to rejoice. You're rejoicing anyway. If you need somebody to tell you to rejoice, then you know there's no fire in the belly. If somebody needs to tell you to do this and do that, there's no fire in the belly. When there's fire in the belly, he'll tell you, it's time to pray. Time to do this, time to do that. It's the Holy Ghost and fire leading you and doing what he wants you to do when you don't feel like doing it. Classic example, not everybody, not everybody, when we were gathering, I know there are nights that you don't feel like going to church. Sundays, we've all agreed, Sundays is the best day you want to stay in bed. 
but the fire in your belly will drive you to do those things you don't want to do. Notice the next time, notice when God speaks and you ready to say, no, nah, not, not today, I'm good. Hmm. When I was coming through, I live 45 minutes from the church, 45 minutes from the church. And Sunday school started at nine o'clock. That means I had to leave home. I think I've shared this once before. I had to leave home at least by eight o'clock. Why eight o'clock? I may run into traffic. I know it's not much traffic, but I live, I was outside the city of Baltimore. I live in Hartford County. I was on time, ready for service. I couldn't get to church enough. I'm coming to my last point. You don't have to put up this slide, Elder. I'm gonna end on this. Saints of God, I wish I could roll back the curtain and allow you to see how the church, I'm talking about Trinity, when my daddy was pastoring, how the church was on fire. We had revival every month. He didn't call preacher out of town, this there. My daddy preached revival every month it was prior to the fourth Sunday. He preached on Wednesday night. He preached on Thursday night. He preached on Friday night and he preached on Sunday and he preached on Sunday night. That was the revival week. But I wish you could just feel a part of the atmosphere that was in that church because somebody had prayed. Somebody was on their knees saying, Lord, save to the uttermost. And I saw you could feel the power of God in the church when you crack the door. Mm. That fourth Friday night in May, 1974, I was seeking for the Holy Ghost. I wanted that power. I wanted that anointing in my life. I made up my mind. I'm receiving. I'm receiving that tonight. And as I look back, I, I don't know whether the pastor, even, I don't even think he preached that night because the power of God was so thick in the church. But I closed everything out and I looked away to heaven and the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Saints of God, I could not, could not drive my car home that night could not drive my car home that night. Somebody, I don't even know who drove my car home that night, but I got there. That time, I, my in-laws, they were transitioning from New York to Baltimore. My, my, my in-laws were staying with me. I made so much racket. I made so much racket. I woke the whole house up. My mother and father, they came down and we all, we had service. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We had service all over again in my living room because the power of God was so thick. Saints of God, I said that to say this. It doesn't stop when the benediction is said. Church and relationship with God continues because there's fire in your belly. What allows me to go from Florida to Baltimore, from Florida to Norfolk, from Florida to Warsaw, here, there, and there. It's the fire of his spirit that pushes me. You can't do this. Nobody can do this on their own. I want to close on a perfect example here. But I wish, I wish you could have been there. We sung a song. I wish you could have been there when the Lord saved my soul. Anybody that just stepped in the church, they would have received salvation, whatever they were looking for. It was there. As you all know, uh, a tropical storm, a hurricane, the cold just blew through Florida. And Mother Grant and I, we had the, the local station on practically all day because we wanted to keep updated what was happening here, there, and everywhere. 
And they happened to show something that was happening uh, on the north side. It was an apartment complex near the Trout River. Apartment complex caught on fire. When they first showed it, it was just the smoke. You couldn't see the fire. Couldn't see the fire. But they revealed that the fire was in the wall. And the fire department had to literally break through the wall of the apartment so that they could release the fire. And of course, the crowd had gathered around to look on to see what was happening. And as I watched that newscast being unfolded before me, I shared this with Bishop, and I'll share this with you. My daddy used to say this, I'm gonna end on this point, I'm gonna have prayer. He said, when the church catches on fire, the world will come to see you burn. I witnessed that. We had people come off the street. And I know Warsaw is a rural area, it may not be the same, I was in Baltimore. People literally came off the street, came in the church, and they were affected, they were saved, some were saved, just because they came in the church in the midst of the saints, because we were so much on fire, because we had given ourselves laying before God in fasting and, 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 and prayer and supplication. We wanted God to do something. I witnessed that. And I am so anxious. I am so ready for that to happen in this day and time. I know it's going to happen. It will be there. It just won't be a coming together. And we go through the most shows and we go through our reading and the testimony, and then we go, we go back home. What happens when you go to church and you can't leave? I've experienced that. Nobody wanted to leave the house of God. We were just so engrossed, so engulfed what the spirit was doing. We didn't want to miss anything because my past would say, if you, if you leave, you're going to miss out on. We didn't want to miss anything that God had for us. So I'll leave you with that thought. If you don't have the fire in your belly, I want you to lay before God and ask God to put fire down on the inside. Fire so much that you cannot do what you want to do. You'll know you have it, but you know it's not you, but it's God that's leading and guiding you. You, you can write your agenda out, but you can't do what you want to do because as the song says, something got a hold of me. I'll repeat the scripture again. You don't belong to yourself. Faith Temple, you've been called by God. You do not belong to yourself. If you pass out the body, who do you expect to go to? <laughs> God. So if you expect to go to God while we're here on earth, you don't belong to yourself. No. I have passed three times seven and I picked, went around that, that bin and I picked up $200 and go a couple of times. I can do anything I want to do, but there's something down on the inside. Sanctuary is a thing like that holds the rain. Something will not allow me to do what I want to do. I want something down on the inside that you'll run to the house of God. You'll run to the Zoom meeting because you want something. You want the fire of the Holy Ghost down in your spirit that does what he wants you to do and not what you want to do. One more little personal. I remember I, I, was, I was working at this time. I had every intention of eating. I'm, I'm lunch hour, you know, we look for lunch hour. If you didn't, I did. And I was got in my car, going out to the restaurant. I said, I'm gonna eat today. Got right to the door of the restaurant. And the spirit said, don't eat today. Hmm, guess what I did? Turned back around, got in my car and obeyed the spirit. As much as I wanted to eat that day, 
didn't have it on my mind. This was, this was not a fast day. It wasn't a day that passed it fast. I just got to the door and the spirit said, don't eat today. Have you ever gotten up during the day in the morning and said, purpose in your heart, I'm going to fix me a good breakfast this morning. And the spirit said, don't eat today. Have you gotten your seat behind God says, pray? Not your normal prayer, but he says, time to pray. That's the fire in your belly that is telling you to do those things you don't want to do. Again, I leave you with this. You don't belong to yourself. You're bought with a price. Spirit of the Holy Ghost dwelleth in you. And you cannot do those things that you would. Faith Temple, thank you for listening to me. I know I've kept you <laughs> a little long this morning, longer than what you normally are, but I appreciate you bearing with me. I want to thank Bishop Nance for this opportunity. Elder Lance, I want to thank you. Elder Wright, I want to thank you for uh, including my scriptures in your, in your daily <laughs> work. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God bless you with heads bowed. Father God of heaven, I th I thank you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for these, your people that are called by your name. God of heaven, you know every one of them. You know them so well, God, you said, you know the very hairs that are upon their head. These are your people called by your name. So God, you do what seemeth good in your sight. I have declared all that you have placed in my spirit. Now let this word attend unto them. Go before them this week. Let your word challenge them. Let your word, I dare say, annoy them. Let it be rooted in their spirit that they cannot, as Jeremiah said, I cannot stay. God, we don't want to have church as normal. We don't have church business as usual. But God, take us out of ourselves. Let your word, let your word burn as fire that it will motivate us, that it will push us, that will allow us to get off a dead center. And we will hear you. God, I love you on today. Thank God for the Faith Temple family. Thank God for these that have tuned in to hear what the Spirit have to say to the church. Pray a special prayer for Bishop Nance and First Lady Victoria. Bless them in that household. Mother Nance, God, that your perfect will be done. God, we thank you for these, God. Again, God, these are your people. They don't belong to me. They're your people. So you have your way in their lives. Their needs are before you. You said in your word, Father, what so we ask according to your will. You said you would do it. That's your word. That is truth. And we stand upon it. And we claim to be so. And I count it done now. There's one not feeling well in the body, touch, heal, and deliver. There's one facing situations in their life, don't know how the situation is going to work out. I say to you through the Spirit, it is already done. Where the God tells the cast, all I will care upon you, for you said you careth for us. But God, you get the honor, you get the glory. We'll take none of your honor, we'll take none of your glory. But God will be so careful to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. God, the days are evil. God, I thank you for this time that I've spent. Thank you for the listening ear. Thank you for the hearts to receive. Father, I count it done now through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And thank God. It's in Bishop's hand at this time. God bless you. Precious saints of God, I love you. Praise God. Amen. We, we want to just thank God for that word. Uh, amen. And saints, uh, Faith Temple, I want you to know that uh, uh, this word is uh, read along with what God spoke to us. Uh, Sunday uh, told us that we were chosen. Amen. And ordained to go forth and bring forth fruit. And 
and came back to this Sunday and told us that we were chosen, hallelujah, before the foundation of the world, amen, and he equipped us to go do what he told us to do in these terrible times, hallelujah. We should have the joy, the peace, amen, to go forth and share the love of Jesus, amen. And he also instructed us, I'm not going to hop on along because I know you've been on there a little while, amen, but be certain you need to stop praying. Those that have not received the Holy Ghost and that would fire need to pray, dedicate some time, hallelujah, that you can get that fire, amen, and, and wait on God and get your mind together, get it on one accord, amen, and to seek God's will for your life, amen, and, and let God fill you, and baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire, amen. Uh, he saved you, not just to save you, but he saved us to go do a work for him, amen. We have to have the Holy Spirit, amen. Go back and look at the tape. Elder writer have it up, hallelujah, momentarily. If not today, it'll be ready by Monday, amen. And look at it. Rehearse it over and over again. What he told you, that, what God is saying to get to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We need to have the fire, saints. We need to have the fire, amen, amen, and be endured with power. And the thing the apostle said, the God said, told him, said, don't look for the Holy Ghost just for the speaking tongues. You need to have the Holy Ghost to give you that power. The speaking in tongue or is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So not in the world today wants to wants to speak in tongues, but hey, you need to listen to what God said today and just, hallelujah, we need the power. The world needs to see the power of God. Amen. And Apostle said in Jeremiah time, God was fed up. Amen. He was ready to lower the boom. Hallelujah. I think we can relate to that in our time today. God can get be getting fed up with this world. Hallelujah. And judgment is soon to come. And we have to be ready. And make sure we have done completed our course and done all that God has called us to be saints. Uh, don't forget the announcement. Uh, Elder Wright will be speaking at uh, Faith River Life, Amen, in Clona Beach, uh, Bishop Jackson Church. If you can't make it, we will have it on being uh, streamed live, Amen. So, but just know that we can. That's it. Their Thanksgiving fellowship dinner, and Elder Wright will be down there next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I thank again for Apostle Grant taking time out and letting the Lord use him to speak to us and confirm to us what he is telling us to do. We got to be about our father's business. Hallelujah. I know it might be getting frustrated, but he gave an illustration where he said, I was moving. I was going somewhere else. But he prayed and God's spirit told him no. And I can relate to that because I wanted to retire in Texas, but I'm here <laughs> because God put me here. And I thank God again that I was in his will and I'm here. Amen. Be blessed, saints. Amen. We truly thank God. Amen. Uh, my mother Nancy behind me yelling the creed. Amen. So, uh, so, so <laughs> I know y'all ready. Amen. So uh, we're going to say this. And we're going to ask uh, uh, Elder Wright to give the benediction. Praise God. Or oh, if possible, do you want to come back and give a benediction? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. You say, Bishop, whatever we you are the nation of Nashville. Established. Established by God to walk in righteousness and true holiness. We are committed to seeking God's perfect will for the direction of our lives, fasting and praying with all supplication for the resolution of life issues, studying the word of God to be biblically sound and equipped to witness, leading the lost and unsaved to Christ and living a sanctified life that fully demonstrates the love of God. All right. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you one more time. We thank you for the word that you have 
put in our hearts that we won't sin against you. Father, let us muse on what you have told us on this week, oh God. Even as the apostle said, let it kind of irritate us, oh God, that we will move, oh Father, to do what you have called us to do, Father. We bless right. you, we honor you, oh God. We thank you right now as we go out this week, Father. Oh God, let us just thank of God your word, Father. We honor you, oh God. We ask you to uh, strengthen the apostle, oh God. We thank you for the word that you have given him, oh God. Strengthen his body, strengthen his mouth, God. Bless him even the more, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Until next time, oh God, that we meet again, oh God, we thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. Be blessed, saints. Thanks again, Apostle. God bless you, uh, Faith Temple. Love you, every one of you. Take care. My prayers are for you. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.